Hey there, Crystal here, and welcome back to How to Amp. Today, we're measuring the love, <laughs> I mean data, by setting up analytics in my hiking blog. Analytics are essential to a successful website. Using analytics helps us understand user behavior, and understanding user behavior empowers changes to improve their experience. Over 50 analytics vendors provide their support to AMP. I've linked to the full list in the description. But today, I'm going to talk about Google Analytics, since it's used to track analytics on over 50% of the world's websites. On a website built without AMP, a basic Google Analytics setup might look something like this. This script allows Google Analytics to capture the total time a user spent on your website, the time a user spent on each page, in which order those pages were visited, and what internal links were clicked. Basically, it's the essentials needed to get started to help you understand your site's popularity and your users' journeys. However, this implementation does not work in AMP, as AMP keeps its pages light and lean by disallowing third-party JavaScript that isn't specially optimized for AMP. Instead, AMP uses the AMP Analytics component. Like all extended AMP components, I need to import the script tag into the head of my document. Then, I'll define the AMP Analytics component and specify the type to gtag. Inside of the AMP Analytics component, I'll place the basic JSON configuration. I'll then update the GA measurement ID fields to my Google Analytics account ID. If I jump over to my Analytics account, I can see that there is one active viewer on my page right now, me. Additionally, this configuration automatically tracks sensible defaults such as how many users are new versus how many are returning. This is all possible through cookies, and gtag automatically tracks users across the AMP cache, giving me more accurate measurements of those users' journeys. Without this session stitching, my analytics might interpret this transition as a bounce. The last thing we want is inaccurate reporting, but good news, if you're using Google Analytics, you can test for this using the AMP tag test. You can find the AMP tag test on amp.dev slash documentation slash tools under developer tools, or by following the link in this video description. To use AMP tag test, insert the URL of your site and click audit. If for some reason your site doesn't pass, I suggest you start by looking into linkers. Linkers is a feature that enables cross-domain and AMP caches ID syncing. But now that we know our users are being tracked correctly, we can talk customization. In the case of my blog, I want to know how much is being shared and across what platforms. To do this, I'll add a triggers configuration to my analytics. I'll name my first trigger, social email, with a selector of email button. This specifies what element will trigger an analytics report. The next thing I'll specify is the on attribute. To set that trigger, click. To wrap up this config, I'll define the vars. The vars clarify how this specific trigger is recorded in my Google Analytics dashboard. The event name in this case is share, and the method of sharing is email. To sync it all up, I'll give my AMP social share email button an ID of email button, and that links it to the analytics trigger. Now, if I click on the email button, then go to my GA dashboard and select events, I can see an event category for engagement. Clicking on it reveals share under event action with the email event label. Looks like I have a successful setup. I can then follow this pattern to set up tracking for each and every one of my social share buttons. And well, that's it for the basics of setting up Google Analytics with your AMP page. Thanks so much for watching.